All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So let's go ahead and look at the markets. We'll look at indexes, commodities. We'll look at a few different stocks and then we're going to talk about uh, my trades. I'm happy I'm ending the week green uh, green on the day. Only about a 1.5% gain today. Uh, overtraded a little bit, took a third trade, uh, should not have taken that third trade, and I knew I probably should have just walked away. Um, I was up about 4.5%, took that down to about 1.5% today. So I didn't give back all of my uh, profits, but gave back a little bit. Uh, and that's just the way it goes. You know, it, it's just a, a, another reinforcement for me that, you know, I'm best with the, the, the opening momentum, getting in and out, and then walking away by 10, 10 30. So we'll talk about all of that. Uh, but I do want to look at the markets here. We got commodities, right? Crude oil is down. Crude oil is now under the 53 and even the $52 a barrel um, mark. So we, we are at about 51.98 as of right now. That's a 2.16% uh, loss. Uh, Brent is hovering around $55 a barrel. Um, we've got gold and silver down okay silver down as much as almost two percent as you can see we got silver down to 2548 uh, gold is back down in that 1850 1855 range uh when you look at these charts i mean let's just look at the gold chart uh real quick you know there's no doubt that the banks have a huge influence on these prices, right? The the paper gold and the paper silver that's being traded and sold uh, definitely influences these uh, prices. But that being said, you know, we did hit this low back December, what was that? Uh, December 20th, we hit a low uh, on gold about 1782. Uh, we have yet to hit that low again. Uh, I, I, I'll be kind of surprised if we do. Um, I think we're going to kind of chop around in this range. Uh, but you know the the next couple of key areas, right? We we gotta hold the 1950 area when we get back up there. We gotta hold that because that has been resistance. You can see 1950 has been resistance in this area um, that was back in November, and then this area, which was actually just a few. Um, this was what January 4th. Um, so. Gold and silver definitely being you know manipulated, but but all the markets are manipulated to some extent by the banks. Uh, the thing is though is when the losses come on real estate, when the losses are finally here in the stock market, I do believe these banks, J.P. Morgan, right? They're they're the custodian for the the silver on SLV. These banks are going to jack up the prices to head. They're going to jack up the prices for precious metals to hedge against the the incoming losses which we know are coming right the economy is not in a good state um things are you know things are pretty serious right this is definitely no joke things are serious the economy is um is is not doing well you know despite the gains in the stock market the overall economy is not doing well um you you do have stocks that are sort of hovering around their all-time highs they pulled back a little bit today but we've got some stocks that are up um, we've got big earnings season right now. Um, PayPal is going to be reporting earnings at the end of the month. I believe Apple's reporting earnings fairly soon. Uh, European stocks drop for the second session on Friday. So we've got the European stocks um, pulling back. Asian markets were down as well. Um, let's look at the CRB index, which is uh, it's one of my favorite indexes right now because it is the commodities index right so uh, generally speaking uh, commodities is actually up 7.84 points or 4.4 percent since the beginning of 2021 um, rising commodity prices right you can see this chart this is the lows and now we're way up here um, when you look at this uh, uh, on like a 10-year chart right it definitely looks like if we can break this area at like 197 because we're at 186 right now. If we can break the 196, 197 area and, and stay up there, um, I think commodities, you know, we could officially say we're, we're in a commodities bull market. Um, today, a lot of these commodities are down, right? The only thing I see up right now is lithium, nickel, uh, but, you know, they do have to pull back um, a little bit to climb higher. But, but generally speaking, 
rising commodity prices are going to support that gold and silver price. You know it, baby. Um, Apple and Tesla earnings, right? Like I said, big earnings week. We also have the Fed and uh, GDP. Uh, a lot of information, right? Economic information coming out this week. Uh, stimulus euphoria may be waning, but I would say it's still pretty high because we haven't gotten that that you know major sell-off. I, I wasn't anticipating a post-inaugural sell-off, but but I was you know trying to uh, um, you know look out for it, and it just simply hasn't happened, right? I, I tried to short a couple of stocks. Uh, the past couple of days, thinking we would get more downward momentum, and, and we just haven't, you know. Like PayPal today um, went back, you know, broke all time highs, right? We got PayPal hitting 254. Granted, it kind of hit and, and then died off a little bit, but it's really holding that VWAP line. Uh, we could see pay, PayPal hit 260 or so uh, by the end of next week. Uh, what else here? You have the uh, uh, CV crisis, right? Um, a lot to talk about there, but but all I'll say is supposedly is the United States has like the most cases right now. Um, I know there was an outbreak in China as well, uh, in Hubei province. So I won't get into my different theories about all of that. Uh, but one thing's for sure is that even without CV nineteen, this kind of stuff. Right, the the destruction of the economy was already underway. Uh, we had the jobless numbers this week. You know, I'm going to highlight this again. We talked about it in yesterday's video, but this is serious. Nine hundred thousand new claims were made last week. You know, Wall Street thought it was going to be nine hundred and twenty-five thousand. It was only uh, nine hundred thousand, but. The, the way they spin this, right? Jobless claims show modest decline as Congress works on more stimulus, right? As if stimulus is going to save these jobs um, or save these people who lost their job. I haven't received a $600 stimulus check. Um, I don't really know anyone. Uh, I don't know too many people that have. Um, a few people that I know have received it, but, uh, you know, with the government, it's obvious that we cannot rely on them. And, uh, you know, I, I really have a feeling that what a lot of this is about is, um, you know, a lot of what we're seeing right now, they, they're trying to, uh, justify or, or at least have a reason, some sort of, you know, ruse, uh, to explain, the destruction of the the economy, the the pre-planned destruction of the economy. Um, they're restructuring the economy, right? They're, it's not even that they're completely destroying it, but they're restructuring it. We are entering some sort of global, you know, NWO. And uh, if you can't see that, you know, you're entitled to your opinions. But but that's what I see going on right now. Uh, Biden faces historic unemployment crisis. So, you know, the headlines are starting to get more and more real. This is the real threat, right? The, the real threat is China taking over the world, China taking over the United States. Uh, the real threat is our purchasing power, uh, our dollar being devalued. Uh, these are the real threats, but they want you thinking that you got to mask up and, uh, you know, use your hand sanitizer, you know, 2,800 times a day, uh, or should I say 6,600 times a day. Um, they want you to, to, to be fearful of this when uh, the real threats are unfortunately economic. So let's go ahead and talk about my trade. Um, you know, I, I was a jackass today. I uh, caught a couple little scalps here in, at the very open, right? I, I, I scalped PayPal, um, shorted it, right? I bought a put right around here, um, sold in the 15 minute demand zone, really thought we were going to get more of a sell off, but uh, I did get out, got out with a little bit of a profit. Uh, and I was not watching PayPal. I went to go watch Apple and Apple was doing pretty well, um, too, right? You can see Apple blasted through my, um, my four hour supply zone, but l let me just go back to PayPal here. I wish I had been watching PayPal because I could have maybe caught this move. Uh, we went from like 146 to 154. So I mean, this was almost like a an this was like an eight dollar move 
that I missed, um, which is unfortunate, but I mean, I'm still ending the week green, ending the day green, whatever, but I could have maybe doubled my account. Like in, in hindsight, in hindsight, I could have maybe doubled my account had I uh, caught this move, uh, but I didn't. And uh, the only other thing I traded, I took a third trade on Square, which I shouldn't have done, but I'll show you on the... Uh, um, on the the 15 minute chart here so you can see we're in a obvious uh, obviously a sort of bearish channel that we did break out of you can see we broke out of that towards the end of the day um, but this went up and was kind of pulling back and I got in on this red candle right here figured my uh, um, you know my, my my stop loss was going to be uh, well let me actually show you a five minute chart um, we had minor demand down here, uh, which is you know about where my stop loss was, like right on this candle. And, and it actually, this is why I do mental stop losses because it, it touched my stop loss twice, but it didn't actually hold. It ended up going back up. And this is why I don't like just having um, you know a, a stop loss. Uh, already in place because market makers can see that and they will shake you out of your trade and then bring the stock back up. Uh, but I, I, I sort of, you know, on this pullback here, it was one of these candles here. Um, I went in on a call for Square. I think it was a, a one forty dollar call, kind of a little, a little bit inexpensive, but it, but it had a, a lower delta, so it wouldn't fluctuate as much. Um, you know, because it was my last trade of the day, whatever. And we kind of chopped around all freaking day, which sucked. Um, and and I, I did uh, end up selling it for a loss somewhere up here. Could have even held on for a couple more minutes right into the close before I sold it and probably would have um, you know, broken even on that trade. Still up on the day. I'm up only about 1.4% uh, between the PayPal trade and... Uh, I was up about 5%. Uh, so I shouldn't have taken this, but, you know, again, on, on a 15 minute chart, this was actually looking pretty good. You know, it, it, it had sort of run up and then it was pulling back. And I really thought we'd get a, a nice rally to 15 minute supply up here. And it just didn't happen. Uh, and that's the way it goes sometimes, right? And while I was, uh, you know, in this square trade, uh, I should have been, I should have just paid attention to PayPal. Right, because PayPal had a really big day, you know, and and this is why it's important to follow, you know, one maybe two different stocks, especially if you're going to scout these things, because, um, you know, you may not get a move like this every day, but if you're watching one stock or two stocks, you really get to know the stock and you get to know its patterns and you know its range and you just get a, a feel for it. And I really do think if I if I had been watching PayPal into you know uh, ten o'clock, I, I would have seen this move and I, I would have caught some of it. Granted, the move was kind of short, right? You would have really had to been there at about you know nine forty five or so, um, and by ten fifteen the move was over. Uh, but you know, I, I think from from next week, you know, I'm, I'm going to pay attention to maybe one or two stocks a day, um, you know, and probably have my eyes on about 10 uh, throughout the week. But all in all, very successful uh, week. You know, I, I feel like I, I succeeded. Um, I made some progress. I didn't lose money. I'm. I made. Uh, you know. I have more money this week than I had last week. So um, that is always good. That's always a blessing. And um, the only other thing I'll say is I'm thinking about making more of a stacker type of video. Um, maybe this weekend. Let me know if you're interested in that in the comment section down below. But I, I want to show you guys some of my silver, some of my pieces. I want to show you some of the uh, the jewelry I got, um, and just kind of you know show off some of my stack, uh, just to get something different, right? So that we're not always looking at charts. Um, I want to you know uh, do a video about the the hard assets that I'm stacking, and uh, so let me know if that's something that you want to see in the comment section down below. Follow me on social media. I'm pretty much everywhere on Alt Tech. If you ain't on Alt Tech yet, you're crazy. Uh, get a parlor account, Gab, BitChute, whatever. Go and follow me over there. You can check out my podcast on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio. And uh, big shout out and thank you to uh, everybody supporting me on Patreon and uh, supporting in every way that you do. And with that, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of the weekend. As always, until next time, God bless.